Reginald Scott here. Just a quick video, um, just showing you the upgrade in my camera technology for my YouTube channel. Uh, this is what I used to be using. I believe they're exported from Russia because they come with a box covered in Russian writing. Uh, you can buy them off Amazon for about £30 or ever so slightly more than that. They boast 1080p, but I very much doubt whether they are. Um, you can judge for yourself from my older videos. And um, the reason I decided to change was number one, I wanted to improve that video quality, and number two, the battery life started to wear out on both of these cameras that I have. So I thought, get rid of those and spend a little bit more money. So I spent about uh, £89 on two of these, which are Polaroid cubes. Uh, the reason I chose these is because I don't like the shape of the GoPro, I find it's too big and too bulky, and it looks ridiculous on your head and wherever else you put them. I don't like cameras that look like cameras because I want to secrete these as secretly as I can on my person, um, especially on the rear view one. I want it as hidden as possible. Uh, so I went for a Polaroid Cube because it's cheap, easy to use, very simplistic and uh, boasts pretty good video quality and I must admit I'm fairly impressed by the nighttime vision on these cameras. Now, the disadvantages of uh, these Polaroid cubes is charging time. Charging time is extremely long on these things, about four to five hours um, after only 90 minutes of usage, which is quite shocking to be honest with you. Um, and secondly, another problem I found with these is I am a PC user. I have a Windows 8 Toshiba laptop uh, that I do my video processing on and um, these things don't really work very well for PCs. Uh, because they record everything into an MOV uh, format of video file and I found that no sound comes out on a PC when you download those videos onto your computer. So you then have to go out and download yourself a, a video converter which I have done so I now change these videos to an MP4 file. That video converter cost me about 30 quid. Now I know you can get them for free off the internet, I tried a few free ones and the video quality was shocking after I used the free ones, so I decided to fork out the extra £30 and buy myself a decent one. So the video converter works really well, it's high speed and it doesn't really take up much of my time, but it was a major disappointment having to purchase an additional thing for these cameras so I could use them on my PC. So if you are thinking of buying one of these, be warned. Um, People talk about the usefulness of the magnet, some people don't like the magnet, some people do. Um, I found the magnet pretty useful actually, and I quite like it. Now as you notice, this particular Polaroid cube is covered in tape. Um, there's a very good reason for that, and I shall explain now. You see, the reason I've covered the sides of this camera in tape um, are twofold. Firstly, I needed to keep this magnet clean while I was doing something. Um, so I covered the sides in, and the bottom in tape and then I only just cut the base out uh, of the electrical tape to expose that magnet now. I finished doing what I was doing. Uh, second thing is to protect the sides of this Polaroid cube and I'll tell you why. If you buy one of these Polaroid cubes they come with absolutely nothing in the box uh, apart from a USB jack and yes that's about it in an instruction manual. So how on earth are you supposed to affix this to your cycling helmet or your bike in any way? You need to buy the mounts and the mounts are quite frankly ridiculously expensive and I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to buy something if I can make it myself. So that's what I did. Um, I went into my factory unit where I work and I picked up some steel uh, galvanized electrical conduit which I had lying around and I manufactured myself some mounts so this is my helmet mount extremely simple it's just a piece of steel that I've cut to shape bent into position and spray painted and now my Polaroid cube simply slots into that and because of the powerful magnet on the bottom and the fact that these two sides are slightly pinched in it holds that camera in place and I can even dangle it up and down and it doesn't fall out. Um, I also made the size of the bracket slightly bigger than the camera itself so that when the camera sits back in position 
it means that the lens which sticks out slightly from the face of the camera is protected by this steel rim preventing any impact so if you want to make one of these mounts as I say it's very simple all you need is some thin steel um, cut it to shape bend the sides and then I just cut two slits in the back of the tab there and threaded through these two velcro straps which uh, I already had lying around from this old camera the rear mount for my bike that I made to go under my seat is a little bit more complicated um, again it's made out of the galvanized steel uh, conduit that I had lying around but um, this one has this mounting here which again has got two sprung steel tabs uh, to hold the camera in place as well as the steel base so that the camera uh, sticks to it magnetically but I also put an adjustment screw and a twist of metal here so that I could uh, put it round my bike seat um, the stem for my bike seat or bike seat post uh, I have this I can have this I haven't put it on my bike yet uh, mounted under my seat um, I tested it on another bike that I've got at the factory so I know it works um, basically I just got some uh, hexagon socket uh, bolts and um, some nuts and some washers and bolted this thing together once I'd made it I, I bent this piece of steel and shaped this piece of steel around an aluminium seat post um, to give it its shape I punched uh, six mil holes for my six mil bolts through it and uh, say bolted it all together so I've got a fair amount of adjustment here I can raise or lower it through this bolt here or I can turn it from side to side with this bolt here uh, but I won't be doing that much once it's in place because it's made of steel it's incredibly rigid which is good it's also very hard wearing so I'm, I'm not going to break it anytime soon unlike the plastic mounts that you can buy from Polaroid and um, yeah camera fits quite nicely in there as you can see it is magnetic difficult to do with one hand in fact it's extremely fiddly to do with one hand there you go that just clips on there like that and as you can see that's not going anywhere so that will be under my seat post fairly discreet apart from the rainbow colored striping on the side of the camera which I can probably get rid of with more tape um, so there you go just in case you wanted to build yourself one um, if you've got any questions stick it in the comments below and um, hope you enjoy the improved video quality that we're going to be getting from these new cameras I'll mention a few more things about these mountings just in case you wanted to make one yourself um, what you will need is some nuts and bolts I've used six mil nuts and bolts that I happen to have lying around with washers they're just normal uh, washers they're not sprung washers or anything uh, or split washers you'll need some uh, steel like I say I used electrical conduit uh, box it's like a box section but you can use any thin steel that you want to make sure it's uh, ferrous it's you know that way it's magnetic if you use non-ferrous metals uh, like aluminium or titanium or something you won't be able to utilize the magnet on the uh, the base there unless of course you put in a plate for example but I wouldn't use aluminium anyway because aluminium would be far too weak uh, at this thickness um, and I doubt very much whether you've got scrap titanium lying around but I don't know maybe you do you will need uh, some way of cutting the metal I used um, an angle grinder and I had a cutting blade and a polishing blade so like a, a sanding blade which I used to round off all the edges and to make it smooth after I've cut it um, you'll need a set of calipers possibly vernier calipers or um, uh, some way of measuring a ruler a metal square was used in its production and uh, a pen indelible marker so those are the sort of things you'll need oh, and black spray paint has also been used here just to give it a bit of a better finish um, yeah maybe I'll do a, a video on how to make them if people are interested uh, if you're not then well you can make it up as you as you go along perhaps this is too complicated perhaps you can think of a better and easier way of mounting these things to your bike and um, if you do why not share it with everybody else anyway thanks for watching and uh, stay safe